Hi, I'm Holly, and with my sister Heather, you're listening to Haunted Family Podcast, a weekly podcast about the paranormal, unsolved mysteries, and even some true crime. (sighs) We took a little bit of time off. Yes, we did. Although you really didn't notice it because we had an extra episode that we uploaded, uh, but we had that extra episode because I apparently forgot to hit publish the week that that episode was supposed to go live. So, yeah. yeah. Um, but no, it's been it's been a busy couple of weeks for us. Um, we were supposed to record. Was it two weeks ago? Yes. Two weeks ago. Um. With a special guest, my boyfriend. Very awesome episode that we had planned. But the night we were going to record, his uncle died really suddenly. So we, you know, of course, couldn't record. And then just real life got in the way. (laughs) Yeah. So here we are. School starts back tomorrow, which means I have no free time anymore. Well, actually, when you're listening to it, school will have already started back. Yes. And if you're listening, and you are one of my new YouTube subscribers, thank you. Yay. I appreciate it. We are we are up to 32 YouTube subscribers. Yay. That's awesome. I know. The YouTube channel is, it's totally my baby. Yeah, not mine at all. But something that is both of our babies. Um, You know that we have been using Holly's Etsy shop, Cat Hair and Glitter. We have. As as our official merch shop. We are seriously considering an independent, standalone, Haunted Family Podcast merchandise shop. Yep. It will not just be things with our name plastered over it. No, it's we are planning yes. super fun things like yeah. What can we tell them? Oh, we can tell them a few things. Of course, you know we'll be migrating a lot of the shirts that Holly makes that are um, paranormal and true crime related. Right. I mean, because everybody needs a shirt that says "Dogs and True Crime Ask Me Anything" or "Cats and True Crime Ask Me Anything." I mean, really. If you don't own that shirt, there there's just something wrong with you. Why are you even listening to us? Everybody needs a puck wedgie shirt. They do. Everybody needs a puck wedgie shirt. Um, something that we've been kicking around since Holly saw my super awesome Ouija board. Um, so we're going to come out with where I'm actually in the process of working on finalizing designs for our own set of Ouija boards. They're going to be awesome. Um, we are also making some really cute yet creepy dolls. Yes. Very, very cute. Yeah. Um, and every, everything that will be in our shop. Oh, I can't say everything because there might be some things that are not 100% handmade by us, but... I would say that probably 95% of everything that is going into our shop will be made by us. And if it's not really made by us, it's probably more than likely designed by us. Right. Oh, Dave, I would say you could definitely say it's designed by us and 99.9% sure that it will be something that we have created. Yeah. Um... Because we like taking on that challenge. Yeah. We don't have enough stuff going on. Yeah. But I actually, um, I bought a ton of supplies this week and I'm ready to get over in my shop and get creating. Well, I have, I'm working on a shop. Like, the shop is moving out of my bedroom. But first, I have to... Sand the floors, restain the floors, paint the walls. <sighs> I did buy the paint today, though. Um, it's I know that our listeners don't know what that what the color that I'm about to say is, but it's that color that every time I wear it, I look plastic. 
The salmon color? Yeah, it, it's called like coral poppy or something like that. Dang. Yeah, well, I figure I'm not wearing it, so. Um, but I have something nice that I want to offer uh, because my Etsy shop is our official merchandise uh, sponsor. I, for now. For now. Um, if you buy something from our shop, I am going to give you 10% off if you use the code HAUNTED. Yay! Everyone loves discounts. They do. So... Um, it, and it does, it's anything in the shop. It does not have to be just, um, true crime related. It's, yeah, she's got, she's got a lot of cute things. She's got sporty things. It's, you know, back to school, it's football season. She's got a lot of stuff for that. You can have things personalized. Yeah. Listen. Oh my God. One thing that I'm working on, it's not in the shop yet, uh, but I'm, so over the moon excited about it and it's not true crime related at all so but it is stick people you know how people love stick people on their cars not me though because I just think that you're inviting like a serial killer to follow you home or something but um I made myself a stick family coffee mug yesterday and I literally carried that coffee mug around today showing people. <laughs> you don't even drink coffee. I don't, but that's okay. It, it's a hot chocolate mug. But, like, I actually, like, I worked today. Like, I, sometimes I'm in an office and sometimes I'm out visiting uh, people. Today was one of those out and about days and I literally carried this coffee mug with me all day long. Because I just wanted to show people how awesome it was. <laughs> Well, I have a um, have an opportunity for our listeners. Actually, no. Before I get into the opportunity, in in regards to Holly's shop, if y- I'm so excited about growing my YouTube channel, the Honda Family Podcast YouTube channel, that when we finally reach a thousand subscribers, and you know we're right now at thirty two, so we're a long way off. But when we finally hit the thousand subscriber mark. We are going to be doing a giveaway. I'm not going to announce what it is going to be yet, but I can guarantee you that it will probably be something or something. I'm thinking a gift basket from, because I mean a thousand subscribers. That's a lot. From, so we need to we need to make it big. Yeah, it will be something or some things from our Honda Family Podcast merch shop slash Holly's Etsy shop. Right. Probably by then we'll have the new shop, the standalone shop done. So. Yeah. But I mean, if for some reason our, my, my YouTube channel explodes and, you know, I hit a thousand subscribers by next week. That would be awesome. It'll be from Holly's merch shop. But if it's, you know, not for another month or two, it'll be, you know, from our standalone hey, shop. Hey, you know what I have in my shop? What? Mug shot mugs. They are so cute. I know. Right now, and I think I mentioned this in the last episode, I have Dahmer listed, Manson listed, and two different Bundy listed. But I really have a whole bunch of others that I just have not um, done yet. But, like, there's going to be an Eileen Warnos. Uh, there's a Kemper. There's, uh, I think there's a Gacy. Oh, this uh, be crazy. Pretty sure that I have a BTK because I mean BTK and Bundy are like they're my they're my two favorites. Not you know because I idolize them or anything, but they're the two that probably freak me out the most. Um, so just keep checking back because they're going to be in the shop soon. Yeah. So um. Go to our YouTube channel, um, subscribe, watch our videos. Yeah, for those of you who have not been to the YouTube channel, it's not it's not just uh, the YouTube version of this podcast. Although this no. episode is also on YouTube, but 
Heather really goes out of her way every week, actually a couple times a week, to curate stories. Um, and each episode is a certain theme, and it's true ghost stories based on that theme. Yeah. Um, and every now and then when we can actually get together, we'll do something like, um, paranormal craft time where we'll take something that you know you can make at home and use for either contacting the spirit world or you know something along those lines right and you can actually watch the videos of our east coast tour of pilot truck stops which is pretty much just our video camera on the dashboard <laughs> yeah I think we had to do no sound for that because it would have been like taken down due to copyright infringement of various songs that we were singing really badly. Yeah. Uh, mostly that one where it's, what was it, Desposito oh, or something? Yes. We butchered that song the whole trip because we heard it like at least 50 times a day. <laughs> um, no. But it's. We are we are working really hard to make our YouTube channel fun. Right. And, you know, it's along the same lines as our podcast, but it's very, it's also different. So, like us, subscribe to us, help us hit that thousand subscriber mark. Yep. And if you do, then you can get a prize. Yep. That will, I, I guarantee no matter what it is, it will be awesome and you will love it. Alright, so this week I was contacted by Kara Weissman of Storyville Entertainment. Cool. And they are working on, she's a television producer and they're working on a project um, and they are looking for people who are, who have a paranormal entity in their home that they are terrified of. Oh, I'm not terrified of mine. I, I'm not terrified of mine either. But if you, um, if you are, and you particularly live in the, um, Charleston, West Virginia, East Lansing, Michigan, or the Cleveland, Ohio area, then they want to hear from you. So if you want her contact information, send me an email at hauntedfamilypodcast at gmail.com and I will get you in contact with her. Cool. Yes. Well, are we ready to jump in? I think we are. Okay. I actually remember this case so different. Like Mandela effect different? No, I mean not Mandela effect different. Uh, because the basic, I mean the, the big picture of it is is still there. But like, I, rem I remember it happening a lot more at Home Depot's. I, I kind of remember that too. So I don't know if like at the time the like malls that was happening in there was a Home Depot and they just happened to mention it multiple times. I don't know. But went back, coming back and like because you know I we lived this so it's still kind of fresh in our mind. That So when we go back I'm like I really thought that it happened a lot more at Home Depot but I was kind of under the impression that this happened closer to my first trip to um, D.C. But apparently I didn't visit D.C. for a couple more years after this. Um, my first trip to D.C. was in May of 2004. And this all went down um, in the fall of 2002. Right. But see, I mean, the year is... I thought it, I thought it was like the same year. No, like the year seemed right to me because I remember Abby was a baby. But no, I was completely just mistaking when I went to D.C. I had to look up because the first time I went to D.C. was for the World War II Memorial dedication. And for some reason I was thinking that it was dedicated the year after I graduated from high school. Oh. But it wasn't. It, that was completely my fault on just misremembering mis dates. Okay, so what we're talking about this week is the D.C. 
or the Beltway Snapper. Well, Snappers. Snappers, right. Um, and for those of you who oh. do not know what that is, it is a shooting spree that occurred um, in the Washington area in October of 2002. And there were, it was three weeks really of, of just terror because it happened very sporadic, but there was also a pattern. Yeah. Um, by the time it was over, 10 people had been killed. And three people had been injured. Just in the D.C. metro area. And another seven people had, were killed and seven more injured in other parts. Right. So that's a pretty big body count for a very short period of time. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, on October 3rd, they hit multiple people. I remember when this, I remember when this was happening, and I remember on the news, everyone was trying to figure out how they were getting away so quickly. Right. And I, I I vividly remember thinking the only way they're doing this is they have had to have modified a vehicle a, a vehicle somehow so that they can shoot from inside. Right. Well, I feel like we're jumping it. way ahead. So we okay. are. Let's back up a little bit then. Okay. So I'm doing my back it up dance, but listeners can't hear because we well, can't see because we're on the radio. Um. So, October 2nd is when they're saying that it started, but it did not actually start in October. Um, actually, it goes back way farther than that to um, February, where... Uh, February 16th, 2002, a Kenya cook was shot and killed um, at the front door of her aunt's house in Tacoma, Washington. Um, the uh, cook's aunt was a friend of John Allen Muhammad's ex-wife, Mildred, and had told Mildred that she should get a divorce. Then you've got, on March 19th of 2002, Jerry Taylor, 60, was killed um, and he was practicing at a golf course. It turned out that Muhammad's sister lived near the golf course. Then on August 1st, 2002, John Gaeta, 51, was changing a tire in Hammond, Louisiana, and he was shot. Uh, he pretended to be dead while Malvo stole his wallet, and then he ran to a gas station and got help. Uh, on March 1st, 2010, he got a letter of apology, which I'm sorry, a little, too little, too late. Um, September 5th, 2002 at 10.30. I have to say, though, if I think if something like this had happened to me and then I received a letter of apology, I don't think that I, I don't think I would accept it. I think that would just infuriate me. Oh, yeah. I mean, I know the type of person I am, so... Yeah, I mean, that would piss me off, too. Um, I'd probably see if I could get on the visitor's list and say what I thought of him. <laughs> but, I mean, it, like, it's like they're making their way to D.C. And, and just leaving a trail in their wake, and nobody's putting anything together yet. 
Well, I mean, law enforcement in the United States is very disjointed. That's true. Um, September 5th, 2002, Paul LaRuffa, 55, he owned a pizza shop and he was shot six times at close range while he was lo- locking up his restaurant. Um, he survived and his laptop was stolen and was later found at John Allen, found in John Allen Muhammad's car. Uh, September 21st, our mom's birthday, uh, 2002, a 41-year-old uh, million would marry him. I'm so sorry. That I know I'm pronouncing your name wrong. He was shot in the head with a 22 caliber pistol in Georgia uh, while he was helping somebody close up their shop. Uh, 19 hours later, Claudine Parker, 52, liquor store clerk, was shot in... Mo- so 19 hours later would be my birthday. Yeah, was shot in Montgomery, Alabama. Um, her co-worker, Kelly Adams, was wounded but not she didn't die. Um, they were eventually were able to tie this to the Beltway attacks. So uh, September twenty third, forty five year old Hong Ballinger was shot in the head and killed with a Bushmaster rifle in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And the Bushmaster rifle was a. Um, Bushmaster XM15 that Lee Boyd Malvo had shoplifted from a Walmart. I mean, it probably wasn't, but no, it was from Bullseye Shooting Supply in Tacoma, Washington. <sighs> and he practiced fire. He practiced shooting it at people at the adjacent shooting range. Crazy. I know. How do they, I mean, do they still have their license to sell guns? Because that would be ridiculous. Okay. I will find this out. Then we've got October 2nd when all of this kicked off. When the official Beltway attacks began. Right. So you've got 5.20 p.m. Um, shots were fired through a Michael's, which is a craft store. I love that. It's like my church. Um, that and Hobby Lobby. Um, but it missed everybody, so they didn't actually count it at first. Um, an hour later at 6.30, James Martin, 55-year-old program analyst, was shot and killed um, at a shopper's food warehouse. Then, a few hours later, in the morning of October 3rd, four people were shot within a span of two hours. Um, And that is James Buchanan. He was shot um, at the Fitzgerald Auto Malls. Um, 812 was a taxi driver. Uh, Prim... Uh, Waliker. I'm sorry, we're terrible with names. Uh, he was pumping gas in his taxi when he was shot. 837, Sarah Ramos, 34. Uh, she was shot at Leisure World Shopping Center. She had just gotten off a bus and uh, was sitting at, on a bench reading a book. 958. Um, 25 year old Lori Ann Lewis Rivera she was vacuuming her caravan at a Shell gas station and um, was shot then at 9.20 p.m. Uh, Pascal Charlotte a 72 year old retired carpenter was walking on Georgia Avenue uh when he got shot and he died just less than an hour later. So the thing that tied them all together was that they were all killed by a single bullet 
and they were all shot from a uh, from a distance so they it was nothing up close um, um at at least one scene law enforcement found a tarot card the death card right that was um well that was sometime later uh o- october 7th october 9th 7th well yeah. so on october 4th they killed a 43 year old uh carol sewell uh but she did not die she was at another michael's in spotsylvania mall spotsylvania mall um she was putting items in her minivan so then october 7th was the 13 year old iron brown he had just gotten out of his uh, mom's car at benjamin tasker middle school and uh fell down they uh, not he wasn't dead but he did end up dying later uh, the they found an area that was that looked like it had been um kind of trampled like somebody had maybe lain in it waiting and in that area they found a tarot card the death card that said call me god on the front and then on the back it said for you mr police code call me god do not release to the press well of course it got out to the press but i mean yeah the death card is scary for people who does who don't actually do tarot but I'm sure everyone who actually, you know, reads tarot cards, they're like, huh? Why would he use that? Right. Yeah, the tarot death card is not, <laughs> does not mean death. It's, it's not, it's not really a bad card. Um, October 9th, 53-year-old civil engineer Dean Harold Myers was shot while pumping gas at a Sunoco. Um, October. I have, I, I I, I've actually gotten gas at that Sunoco station. October 11th. Because um, I remember I was getting gas and I looked, I, you know, then I stopped and I looked around and I was like, oh, wait a minute. I recognize this place. That's that's kind of a surreal feeling. Yeah. Uh it's October 11th, 53-year-old Kenneth Bridges was shot also while pumping gas at an Exxon station. I don't know why I had it tied to my head as mostly Home Depot when, honestly, Michaels and gas stations are the, you know, were more common. Uh, but this also happened in Spotsylvania. Then you've got October 14th, 47-year-old Linda Franklin. She actually worked for the FBI as an analyst. And and I remember when this happened, the news thought that they that the that the shooter was starting to switch focus and that it was starting to target FBI agents and law enforcement. But I think it was a I think they later discovered that it was just an accident. Right. But this not that he killed her, but that he killed an FBI agent. I, right. I don't think he she was at a Home Depot. He didn't know that she was an agent. Yeah. He didn't know who she was. He just shot her and as happenstance, she was an FBI agent. Yeah. So at this time, um gas stations were freaking out and they were trying to block you know, their parking lots. So, uh, people couldn't target them. And our snipers took five days off and, and didn't target anymore until October 19th, where they got 37 year old Jeffrey Hopper in a parking lot near Ponderosa Steakhouse. Then on October 21st, um, because reports were saying that it was a white van. I don't know why. It's always a white van, right? Serial killer vans are always white vans. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know yeah. why. Kidnapper um, vans are always white vans. But in this case, it was actually not a white van. But 
a white van hysteria started happening and especially white vans driven by dark-skinned men right because the reports were that the shooters were possibly hispanic or middle eastern right now keep in mind this is a year after 9 11. Yeah. what do we say on our shows about you know eyewitnesses reports they're not always the most accurate right so they ended up arresting people this a couple of guys that were in a white van um they were outside of a gas station uh they were illegal immigrants but they had no connection whatsoever to the shootings um but they they stayed in ins's custody and then later were deported October 22nd, a bus driver, Conrad Johnson, who was 35, was shot while standing on the steps of his bus. Then October 23rd, there was no shootings. Uh, But on this day, they started getting ballistic reports in. And they were able to link Johnson to the Beltway killings. Um... They were a, they also searched a searched an area in Tacoma, Washington with a metal detector looking for bullets and shell casings. So um, it was it was crazy. I mean, I couldn't even imagine living in DC, living in the DC area at that time. Because, I mean, he was hitting multiple states. Because, you know, that's a tri-state area. Um, and it is at this time, actually this day, shortly after the FBI confirm that they have searched a property in Tacoma, Washington, that they announced that they are looking for, uh, that they have issued an arrest warrant for a John Allen Muhammad also known as John Allen Williams. Williams was his last name before he um, converted to Islam and changed his last name to Muhammad. Um, And that they are searching for a blue 1990 Chevy Caprice and a white 1989 Chevy Celebrity. Right. So this was our, this was, this was the, I want to say this was kind of the pinnacle of fervor in the case. At least, you know, from my perspective of watching this unfold on the news. Yeah. So, um, and this is probably why I'm a little bit scared of rest areas and why I would never go to one alone. We, I was going to say, we did sleep in a rest area, Holly, on our East Coast trip. I know, and I was a little nervous about it, but, uh, you know, I mean, we all... We were only three minutes away from our gun. <laughs> that's true. Um, so, at 3.15 on the morning of October 24th, Muhammad and Malvo were asleep in a rest area when... I think I've actually taken a nap in this very rest area also. We probably napped in this rest area. Uh, Whitney Donahue noticed a parked car. And uh, just a few hours before that is when... Uh, Charles Moose, the uh, Montgomery County Police Chief, had issued the uh, be on the lookout for. So when Whitney saw that, she called it in. Yeah, um, it was actually called in by not only a motorist, but an attendant at the rest stop. Yep, and uh, so they were just asleep when they came and knocked on the door and and arrest them without incident. Like, that's so crazy. Trooper Wayne Smith of the Maryland State Police was the first on the scene, and he 
um, was in an unmarked police car and blocked off the exits. Uh, but none of that was needed. Yeah. Um, in the trunk of the car, they found a gun, a tripod, and a scope. And the trunk had a hole punched through it so that they could aim the gun out the trunk without being detected. Yeah. Now, ballistics linked the gun in the car to 11 of the 14 shootings. Now, this is where I think it gets crazy. I mean, it's crazy from the beginning. Well, yes. I mean, actually, from the very beginning, that this, that um, John Boyd Malvo's, sorry, Lee Boyd Malvo's mom just sort of leaves her son with this guy and illegally immigrates to the United States. Yeah. I mean, okay, I... I can understand that when you're living in... in You're living in poverty, you do drastic things to change your circumstances. Right. And I can also say that I'm, I'm not a parent, so... Well, I don't know I, what I am, but I would never I leave my imagine, kids. I can't imagine abandoning my dogs to move to another area. So, so I can't imagine just leaving, especially you know somebody who is not directly connected to me. Right. So, the motive. Why? I mean, I don't want. I don't want to be accused of parent shaming, but listen. Sometimes parents need to be shamed. Yeah. I'm serious. I just feel like we live in a world, and this is coming from a parent who, honestly, sometimes I need to fucking be shamed. But like, we live in a world where parents can do no wrong, and whatever that they want to do with or to their kids, we're all supposed to be okay with it. Well, I'm sorry. Listen. My degree is in early childhood development and I work every single day with teachers and kids. And I'm going to tell you that sometimes parents need to be shamed. Not everyone's parenting style is correct. Not everybody's parenting style is healthy. No. I mean, I'm going to say I mess up a lot. I mean, I am not a perfect parent by any means. But I I try to be a healthy parent and I am just seeing so, I'm just seeing a trend of unhealthy parenting, of people, I don't know, of, of people doing really shitty jobs in parenting and you know, acting like they've got diplomatic immunity from fucking up their kids or something. Listen, because they're the parents. Right, I'm just saying, so raise kids that you want to be friends with, because not be your child's friend, but raise kids that when they're adults, you want to hang out with them, and that they're productive members of society. Otherwise, you will be raising them until they're my age. And then you'll be raising their kids. And ain't nobody want to do that. And I think that in a lot of regards, Lee Boyd Malvo is a product of his raising. I don't think that he really had... I don't think he had people looking out for his best interests. It doesn't seem to. And people really trying to teach him well I mean just teach him in general right and then he fell in with well I mean sorry he was pretty much gave to this manipulative crazy person who had this plot to well I mean in Lee Wood Malvo's words he wanted to kill 
what was it, 30 white people in 30 days? Well, he actually wanted to kill his ex-wife, Mildred, because she got custody of the kids and left Washington State and went to Washington, D.C., and he was completely cut off from the kids. So, he was trying to kill a bunch of people and in the process of that, kill her so that it made, so he wouldn't be looked at as a suspect because, well, there's all these other people that were also killed the same way. I mean, in one um, regard, it it's smart, but in another regard, he's fucking stupid. Malvo said at one of the trials that phase one of Muhammad's plan was to kill six white people a day for 30 days. And then to move, and that was in D.C., and then move to Baltimore. Yeah, except they are, he just randomly hit D.C., Baltimore, Virginia. To shoot and kill a cop in Baltimore and then plant explosives at the cop's funeral. I also kind of feel like Malvo at that point was just talking out of his ass. You know, I feel like he was caught, so let's just go down with a blaze of glory and... Well, there was also a plan. I mean, I think there's also a thing where Muhammad was, you know, they won't give you the death penalty because you're a child, so... That's true. Um, I don't know. I think that, I mean... Malvo was 17. So, 17 year olds, yes. They, they are still children, but they should know better. Listen, Emmy is 14 and she knows better than to kill somebody. But I don't think that this child had the raising that Emmy has. Still, how do you not know that killing somebody is a bad thing at 17? Because you have crappy people raising you who are manipulating you into thinking that this is okay. The same way a whole bunch of people that we grew up with grew up thinking, hey, snorting all these drugs and popping all these pills is okay because our parents do it. Uh, I guess. I'm not, I'm not excusing what he did. He is in prison, and he will spend the rest of his life in prison, and that is exactly where he needs to be. That is true. Um, Because, I mean, just because, you know, just because I can see some reasoning doesn't mean I can, you know, excuse what you did. But, you know, all of this could have been solved earlier if... The tip line was not bogged down. They were not expecting the hundreds of thousands of tips that they got. And some of them were people trying to say that they were the Beltway sniper. And I don't understand that. Why do people admit to stuff that they did not do? People are stupid. Uh, Like straight up. But a man named Robert Holmes, who was a friend of Muhammad's, Uh, tried to call and turn him in but somehow his tip got lost in all of all of the tips that they were receiving and actually the snipers themselves tried to call in and take credit but they could never get through yeah people don't call in unless you have actually a legitimate tip but if you are one of those people that would just randomly call in, like, send me an email and explain to me why. Because I do not understand yes. it. I mean, you you are listening to somebody who minored in criminology and, like, legitimately minored in criminology. But then I feel like I have a major in, like, forensic files and you know, uh, unsolved mysteries and... I actually majored in criminology and sociology. So, yes, we would love to hear from you. With all of this 
background on crime and I still do not understand what in the world would motivate you to come forward and say you do it. Now, I I understand false confessions and interrogation, but if you are the type of person who would call a tip line and say, hey, I did it, why? Like, you can't possibly think that anything good is going to come out of that. I mean, even if you get notoriety, you're going to go to jail for a while. And I've never been, but I hear jail and prison, not a fun place to be. Yeah, I can't imagine the same place I want to go. I, I cannot either. You know what you don't get to do in jail and prison? Sleep with your cat. Feeny would miss me. She would be like, I don't know where my mom is. Like, think about that, people. Do you not have a dog or a cat that would miss you if you falsely confess to something? And if you don't have a dog or a cat that would miss you, maybe you should get or, one. Or a bird. Or a fish. Or, I mean, heck, yeah. even a snake. A pet duck. Oh, uh, or a little chicken. Like, I don't care what you have, but, like, you should probably get something that's going to miss you to keep you from false confessing. Or a kid. Do you have a kid that might miss you? No. I have kids, kid, but I don't know if they would miss me. <laughs> a, a, a kid that doesn't want to be felt up in the pat down getting into the prison to visit you? Oh, goodness. I have this friend on Facebook. I don't think she listens to the podcast, so I feel comfortable in saying this. But she seems to think that prisons are like these cush places with, uh, you know, great food and unlimited, like, high-speed internet and Netflix and all this. And every time she goes on these rants about her tax dollars being wasted on that, I want to call her a flipping idiot. Weird. Because that's not how prisons are at all. I have friends that work in prisons. And I can tell you that our prison system is so screwed up and our prisons are so unsafe for everybody, not just the inmates, but the guards too. And we have, we, we have a relative who is a guard. Yeah, we could really, uh, we could do, we could do a lot by modeling our prisons after like Norway's prisons or some prisons, you know, from other countries that have way lower recidivism rates and treat their inmates, you know, actually like human beings because it's safer for them and it's a lot safer for the guards. I read a study last week that said that prison guards actually have the same rates as of PTSD as combat soldiers. Damn. Think about that. I I know people who have worked in prisons. And, I mean, like, their stress level is just through the roof. Oh, I get stressed just thinking about it. I do, too. I, and I, it shouldn't be that way. Yes, they're in prison to be punished, but we shouldn't make prison so bad that we're actually also making it unsafe for our prison guards right? to even just go to work. We should at least want our prison guards to be safe going into work. That's true. Okay, I think I went off on a rant and we need to focus back on our story of the DC snipers. Right. So I will say though that even even a few years later visiting DC it was still I mean you could still feel people concerned just you know being out in the open. It took a while for people to relax again because of this. Oh yeah. I've been to this area um, numerous times. And. I, actually, I have not. 
I mean, I apparently have been to the town that Malvo is now multiple times, but I had no clue. Yeah. Um, while researching for this episode, I read a little blurb that said that, and let me see if I can find it. In 2011, Malvo petitioned the circuit judge in Wise County, Virginia for a change of name based on he felt it'd be safer if fellow inmates didn't know his real name due to his notoriety. And I was like, why in the world would he petition a judge in Wise, Virginia? That's weird. Yeah. It is. And it comes to find out that that's actually where the, where he is imprisoned at. Yeah, I had no idea. And we've been to Wise like a million times. Yeah. Um, I used to take part in a Civil War reenactment in downtown Wise. Wise is only like, what, two hours from us, if that? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, so he is in Red Onion... Let me see if I can find it. Red Onion State Prison. And I pulled it up on the map. It is actually closer to Pound than it is um, downtown Wise. And it is only like 22 minutes from the Kentucky state line. That's crazy. But, I mean, I pulled it up on Google Maps. And I totally understand why they picked it. It's in the middle of nowhere, and it is surrounded by... I mean, it's up on a mountain, and it's surrounded by forest. But, a few years ago, a... I don't know, I guess it was like city, maybe, county, I don't know. But a cop was transporting a prisoner, and they stopped at a restaurant. I want to say it was like a KFC or something, but... They stopped at a restaurant to go and they went in and they left the prisoner in the car and he somehow stole the car from them and drove it like, I I don't know, but it was like crazy fast and drove it into Kentucky and that's where they caught him with the spike strips. But if you, the video is on YouTube and I will try to remember to link it because it, I just laugh and laugh it's so funny apparently red onion is like virginia's supermax prison it is billed as being a um security level s with segregation qualifier for recently disruptive assaultive severe behavioral problems predatory type behavior escape risk or um segregation required inmates damn and as many times as i've been wise virginia i didn't even know it was there yeah i didn't either okay actually i pulled up their address it is actually in pound virginia wise county so i don't know why one of the other places i was list i saw had it listed as wise virginia maybe that site didn't know that wise virginia and wise county virginia You know, are kind of one of those things where it can be in Wise County, but it can, you know, but it's not everything in Wise County is Wise, Virginia. Right. Like, our parents got married in Wise County, Virginia, but they got married in Clintwood. Yeah. So, maybe maybe the person who made the first um, thing I saw didn't know that. So, yeah. Pound, Virginia. Yeah. Unlike... Kentucky that has a million different small counties like there are states that have big counties with a bunch of small cities you know we never even discussed with our listeners how well we briefly did how um John Allen Muhammad and Lee William Malvo came to be together well yeah we kind of did you said that Malvo's mom just dropped him off Lee William Malvo was not a U.S. citizen he was actually born in Kingston, Jamaica. I wonder why he is still here then instead of being deported. 
because um, you don't when you come to crime you don't automatically get deported. Well, I mean, I, th- I think in some cases they might, but with cases like this with murder, you have to serve out your time before you'll be deported. Oh, and he was sentenced to life without the possibility of parole. So, so he's gonna be here forever. Yeah. I I don't know. His mother his mother actually was deported though. His mother was deported shortly after um all of this went down. Um they his Malvo and his mother were in Antigua and Barbuda. I think Barbuda is just a fun name. I know, I like that. When they met John Allen Muhammad and this was in like 99 so, um, Lee Boyd Malvo was like 14 at the time. And, um, not long after that, Una James, which is Lee Boyd Malvo's mom, left him with Muhammad and came to Florida. In, um, came to the United States using false documents. And then 2001, so a couple of years later, Malvo and Muhammad followed her and came to Miami. Oh. So they did eventually get back up. She was deported in 2002 back to Jamaica. I mean, that's kind of weird and... Oh, actually, in December of 2002... I was reading my notes wrong. In December of 2002, a Border Patrol agent in Washington arrested Lee Boyd Malvo and his mother. Wait. She was... De- in December of 2002, the shootings would have already have happened. That's what this says. Well... Wait. It w- I would say it would have to be... 2001. Sorry. Okay. 2001. Yeah, I was going to say... You know how my handwriting is, Holly. <laughs> At some point, I need to share with our listeners how bad my penmanship is. <laughs> I really should type out everything. I do most most weeks. Yeah. Oh, God. Well, our Instagram listeners saw Anthony's notes typed out and stapled together in order and I know his notes were really funny because that reminded me of when we did the uh, Kurt Cobain episode and I did that and nobody had researched near as well as I did so I emailed everybody a copy of my notes. You did awesome that year. That year? (laughs) (laughs) It's the only time that year that I did good. (laughs) So anyway um his mom was held, but Malvo was actually released on bond for some reason. And moved into a homeless shelter with Muhammad. Probably because he was a minor. Muhammad claimed that he was his father and enrolled him in school. And it was at this time that he stole the Bushmaster XM-15. And they started training for their attacks. So I wonder if in some way... He felt like he owed him? Yes. But also if his mother being held by immigration was the catalyst. on In his mind. Right, because at that time you he's know, still just I a kid. I have to because I have nothing now. Right. I mean, that doesn't make it right. No. I mean, now he has nothing, and he's going to live out his days in Virginia. I mean, I wouldn't mind living out my days in Virginia. Not a Virginia prison, but Virginia is a beautiful state. I don't know that I would want to live out my days in Virginia. Because they have, like, they have to go to a special store to get their liquor. True. I cannot just go to I Walmart mean, and pick up Jaeger. I'd have to go to the ABC store. 
And they have that whole, you know, speed patrolled by air. Thing. I know. I swear every time I see that sign, I like imagine that aircraft is going to come and shoot my car up. But I mean, Virginia is beautiful. That's true. But I, I could just imagine that their prisons are not because, you know, prisons are scary. Truth. I imagine it to be like Orange is the New Black. Yeah, probably not. I'm really surprised that girl's like little blip in prison has became so famous and popular. I know. Well, probably because well, I didn't read the book, but from what I understand, the uh, mo- the show is extremely loosely based. I think if people should take away anything from this, it's don't dump your you kids. Fa- with that and I mean following the footsteps of Piper Kerman and cause then you'll make tons of money off a book you write um no I'm don't do that she got lucky that her book became popular yeah I would say if you take away anything it's don't shoot people and if you have a problem with your ex-wife deal with it in court yeah um you know i think we are, we're always stressing this show about you know being aware of your surroundings yeah it, but this would have helped none of these people no none of it because i mean just the little tip of a barrel was coming out of a hole in a trunk. And then that makes you feel so vulnerable. That's true. Yeah, you know, it takes away you you can't even pump gas with any safety. I think if our listeners can take anything away from this, it's what we say all the time. There's bad people in this world. They do bad things. Um, no, I'm going to say, always keep your cell phone on you because you never know when you're going to have to call 911 from the ground. Yeah. Oh, and don't call the tip line if you don't actually have a legitimate tip. Yeah. What even? And if you feel like you want to call the tip line, get a pet instead. Yeah. Or if you feel like you want to call the tip line email us instead yeah and explain it to us yeah I just I don't even yeah I don't either so do we have a stupid criminal for this week yes we do Um, although I really feel like I want to do two because I want to do that one that you shared earlier I don't remember what I shared earlier but okay okay I will find it I will read this one while you're finding that one. Okay, sounds good. So, for our listeners who don't know, Holly is obsessed with cows. I even have a cow tattoo. She has been obsessed with cows forever. I actually have a nephew. He is older than Abby and Emmy. And he is a stuffed cow named Calvin. C-O-W-V-I-N. Calvin. I Actually, that is what the tattoo is a replica of this stuffed cow. Yes. So, a Florida woman. I feel like we we're always picking on Florida men. Now it's a Florida woman. <laughs> Jamie Young, 46. Maybe related to us. Maybe not. And her passenger, Jennifer Kaufman were spotted in a stolen Subaru SUV. That- Cops tried to stop them. They ran a red, they ran a stop line, um, crashed into a ditch, and then bailed out of the car. And they ran into a cow pasture. Oddly enough, this entire scene happened to a relative of ours. Only it wasn't a cow pasture, it was a golf course. So, um, Young 
hid in some bushes. Canine unit found her. No big deal. Kaufman kept running. And soon found herself surrounded by cows. Yeah. The cows actually herded her in and pretty much held her until the cops got there. Because cows are good. The cows panicked and they kind of thought that she was going to hurt their babies and they started hitting her with their tails and, you know, being aggressive to her. And um, the guy who actually lives across the road from him said that he's never seen those cows act like that. He's like, but then again, I've never seen someone running through their field. So there's that. I love this story. Um, I live in farm country. I don't own cows, but I mean, I own goats. I want cows. But, I mean, uh, cows are just, like, so chill. So uh, And they're I, cute. Yeah. I, I love the fact that cows saved the day in this case. So, what's your story, Holly? Um, Bluffton, South Carolina. A um, 32-year-old Lauren Elizabeth Cutshaw was slurring her words when she was pulled over by cops and they did a breathalyzer on her that showed that she was at a blood alcohol level of 0.18. But she argued that she should not go to jail because um, she was a cheerleader and a sorority girl who graduated from a highly accredited university and... Her partner is a cop. So she tried, you know, white privileged, partner's a cop, uh, and the sorority girl angle and got shot down on all of them and was taken to jail and charged with drunk driving, speeding, and marijuana possession. I kind of want to hug this cop. Yeah. I mean, he's he's just doing his job following the books, but I mean, like... Well, he just just to hold it together and not like laugh in her face. Yeah. Well, when he it's, asked it's her, something. he asked her what being a white clean girl had to do with it, and she said, "Well, you're a cop. You should know what that means." Yeah. I would love to know what that means. I mean, does that mean that she's going she, to she was, have she sex was with him? Sex. Uh, yeah. But I mean, she just said her partner's a cop. Couldn't he get her out of it? You would think, but... Yeah. I would say her former partner, because he... She's probably dumped now. I, I just want to hug this cop for the pure and simple fact that he was able to hold it together and not really say what was on his mind, I'm sure, while she was going on about this. Yeah, so... um, He showed a good level of professionalism because, you know, I think that normal people would have just been like... Yeah, they they would they would have called her some stuff. Yeah. So people, if you get pulled over, just take the ticket, okay? And don't drink remember and drive. That friend of you, remember that friend of yours who every time she got pulled over would just burst into tears. Yes. That was crazy. So, thanks for listening. Um, visit my Etsy shop, Cat Hair Glitter, on, well, Etsy. I uh, use the promo code HAUNTED for 10% off your order of anything at all in the shop. Visit our YouTube channel. Yes, and subscribe, please. Um. Follow us on Instagram. We're, we're funny on Instagram. We are. We're really funny on Instagram. Um, if you feel the need, I don't know, to call in a tip line and say that you did it just don't and if you feel like telling a cop that you're a clean white girl from an accredited university like don't do that either that's just tacky um that's really all i have for this week so thanks for listening bye bye if you like this episode please take a moment to rate and review us on itunes stitcher or wherever you get your podcast fix You can also show your love by giving us a shout out on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. We are Haunted Family Podcasts everywhere. You can also tweet us by going to hauntedfamilypodcast.com slash tweet.
For merchandise, please go to Holly's Etsy shop, etsy.com slash cathairglitter. If you have a stupid criminal, paranormal story, or true crime suggestion, email us at hauntedfamilypodcast at gmail.com. We would love to hear from you. Thanks for listening.